Clinton. While on the Republican side, Donald Trump is still soaring. It's your voice, your vote. And let's take a look at those numbers. Among Republicans, Trump leads, followed by another outsider, Dr. Ben Carson. Then nobody else breaks double digits. Ted Cruz and Scott Walker are tied for third, but trailing far behind Trump. The biggest surprise is among Democrats. Clinton's lead now down to single digits, just seven points ahead of Sanders. It's the first time she's nope. dropped below 50 percent in the Des Moines Register Bloomberg poll this year. We're taking on every twist and turn in the 2016 race this morning, and Bernie Sanders is standing by live to weigh in. First, ABC's John Carl on the dramatic difference between the leading candidates right now. It's the tale of two frontrunners. For one, the best of times. For the other, well, if it isn't the worst, it's getting there. The Republican establishment fretting their frontrunner is too strong and could actually win. Democratic establishment fretting theirs is too weak and could actually lose. While Hillary Clinton has a comfortable lead in national polls, she's already trailing a 73-year-old self-described socialist in New Hampshire. And now Bernie Sanders is surging in Iowa as well. Despite yet another mea culpa over her private home email server. I should have used two emails, one personal, one uh, for work, um, and I take responsibility for that decision. Doubts over her email account, still under investigation by the FBI, are taking a toll. 61% of voters now say she's untrustworthy. While some Democrats are urging Vice President Biden to jump in, handing out these candy bars at this week's DNC meeting. Trump, meanwhile, is having the time of his life, riding high in the early states, riding high nationally, seemingly riding high everywhere. Top Republicans are worried he's alienating key voting groups. Jeb Bush even making his own trip to the border to trash Trump's plan to deport undocumented immigrants. His proposal is unrealistic. It will cost hundreds of billions of dollars. It will violate people's civil liberties. But perhaps the biggest attack on the frontrunners comes not from their opponents, but from voters. A recent poll asking for the first words that come to mind about each of them. For Hillary Clinton, liar dishonest, untrustworthy. For Donald Trump, arrogant, blowhard, idiot. So much for great expectations for either frontrunner. For this week, Jonathan Carl, ABC News, Washington. Our thanks to John. Let's go straight to Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator, good morning. You saw those new poll numbers. Is Hillary Clinton's campaign in trouble? I don't know if her campaign is in trouble, but our campaign is doing great. You know, it's not just in Iowa, it's in New Hampshire, it's all across this country, Martha. I think people are responding to our message that something is wrong when the middle class of this country continues to disappear. People are working longer hours for lower wages, and almost all of the new wealth and income is going to the top 1%. That is not the type of country, not the type of economy that the American people want or deserve. And I think they're prepared to support somebody who's going to take on the billionaire class and make an economy work for ordinary people, not just for the people on top. Well, well Senator Sanders, Hillary Clinton has lost about a third of her supporters since May, but the polls don't show those supporters, a significant number, are not heading your way. Why not, given what you've said? Well, the poll that I saw said that there was massive enthusiasm for the message that we're delivering and that the vast majority of the people who are voting for me in that Iowa poll, and I think it's true all over this country, are not necessarily anti-Hillary Clinton, they're pro-Bernie Sanders. And they want a candidate who is not dependent upon super PACs, a candidate who is prepared to take on and overturn this disastrous Citizens United Supreme Court decision, help have the United States lead the world in combating climate change, make college affordable to all people. I have to tell you, Martha, I think the gains that we are seeing and the enthusiasm, the huge crowds that we are seeing, this is not anti-Hillary Clinton. This is pro-Bernie Sanders and pro a message that says enough is enough. This country and our government belong to all of us, not just a handful of very wealthy people. S Senator Sanders, this morning again, we know you've been voicing great concern about the middle class, the cost of college, climate change, and yet there are two issues that are entirely missing from your campaign website, and those are issues of national security and foreign policy. Don't you feel these are issues that a president should be very concerned about? Absolutely, Martha. And we will, you know, in all fairness, we've only been in this race for three and a half months. Uh, and we've been focusing, quite correctly, as, as you've indicated, uh, on the economy, on the collapse of the American middle class, on massive income and wealth inequality. You're, but you're absolutely right. Foreign policy is a huge issue. Let me just say a word or two about that. And we are going to spend more time on that. Uh, you are looking at a, a senator and a former congressman. And as a congressman, I voted against the war in Iraq, which I think will go down in history as one of the worst foreign uh, foreign policy blunders uh, that we have ever seen, leading to the enormous destabilization uh, of that region right now. Uh, but the issue of foreign policy, how we bring the world together, our allies together, uh, not do it alone, uh, to take on ISIS, uh, to deal with the other threats and problems around Senator the world. Senator Sanders, you, you brought up the Iraq you war. Address it. You, you also voted against the first Gulf War in 1991 when Saddam Hussein yes. had invaded Kuwait. You did not support air, right. air attacks after chemi chemical attacks in Syria. You did support the initial invasion into Afghanistan. So can you tell me Correct. what your criteria is for the use of force? Yes, good question, a fair question. Look, uh, I think historically, in too many instances, uh, the United States has gone to war often unilaterally uh, when we should not have. Uh, I think my vote against the first uh, war in the Gulf region was the right vote. I think we could have gotten Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait in a way that did not require a war. 
Uh, and I think certainly my vote Even against the war in Iraq will go down. Even though he's invaded Kuwait? I know, but the point was you have the whole world united against them, Arthur. Do we need to go to war in every instance, or can we bring pressure of sanctions and international pressure to resolve these conflicts? Look, I am supporting President Obama's effort to make certain that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. But I get very nervous about my Republican friends who keep implying that the only way we could do that is through another war. War is the last resort, not the first resort. So you are looking at a guy. Yeah, there are times when you have to use force. No question about it. But and that and is, that the only when we're attacked? is that only when we're attacked? Because if you look at your record, you supported the invasion into Afghanistan after we were attacked. Is that the only time you would support it? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, I think using the, our military is an option, obviously, that we will always have uh, under certain circumstances. But it is the last option. And I applaud the president for trying to make certain that we stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, but we do it in a way that does not require war. The second point that I would make is the United States cannot do it alone. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabia has the third largest military budget in the entire world. They're going to have to get in and take on ISIS as well as other countries in that region. The United States should be supportive. We should be working with other countries. But the United States cannot always be the only country involved in these wars. Let, let me go back to the Iran agreement that you brought up and your support of that agreement. Can you imagine Iran or Russia signing some sort of agreement in the future given your record on your reluctance to use force? Because there is always that threat of force. But they may look at you and say, Bernie Sanders wouldn't do anything about this. Well, I think they would be making a very, very big mistake. I believe that the United States should have the strongest military in the world. We should be working with other countries in coalition. And when people threaten the United States or threaten our allies or commit genocide, the United States with other countries should be prepared to act militarily. But I think when we look at our recent history, again, especially the war in Iraq, uh, I think history will recall that is a terrible mistake, which has led to massive destabilization and many other problems. So, yes, there are times when you have to use military force. No question about it. I am prepared to do that. Would that you do away the with the resort, drone program? The Would you do away with the drone program? Because you have, have clearly had problems with that. You didn't uh, vote for CIA Director John Brennan because of the drone program and how it was run. I think what you, Martha, what you can argue is that there are times and places where drone attacks have been effective. There are times and places where they have been absolutely uh, counter-effective uh, and have caused more problems than they have solved. When you kill innocent people, what the end result is that people in the region become anti-American who otherwise would not have been. So I think we have to use drones very, very selectively and effectively. That has not always been the case. Okay, thank you very much, Senator Sanders. Now to the Republican. About it. And, and is, that only when we're I attacked? is that only when we're attacked? Is that only when we're attacked? Because if you look at your record, you supported the invasion into Afghanistan after we were attacked. Is that the only time you would support it? No, not at all. Not at all. You know, I think using the, our military is an option, obviously, that we will always have uh, under certain circumstances. But it is the last option. And I applaud the president for trying to make certain that we stop Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, but we do it in a way that does not require war. The second point that I would make is the United States cannot do it alone. In the Middle East, Saudi Arabia has the third largest military budget in the entire world. They're going to have to get in and take on ISIS, as well as other countries in that region. The United States should be supportive. We should be working with other countries. But the United States cannot always be the only country involved in these wars. Let, let me go back to the Iran agreement that you brought up and your support of that agreement. Can you imagine Iran or Russia signing some sort of agreement in the future, given your record on your reluctance to use force? Because there is always that threat of force. But they may look at you and say, Bernie Sanders wouldn't do anything about this. Well, I think they would be making a very, very big mistake. I believe that the United States should have the strongest military in the world. We should be working with other countries in coalition. And when people threaten the United States or threaten our allies or commit genocide, the United States with other countries should be prepared to act militarily. But I think when we look at our recent history, again, especially the war in Iraq, uh, I think history will record that is a terrible mistake, which has led to massive destabilization and many other problems. So, yes, there are times when you have to use military force. No question about it. I am prepared to do that. Would you do the away with the drone program? The Would you do away with the drone program? Because you have, have clearly had problems with that. You didn't uh, vote for CIA Director John Brennan because of the drone program and how it was run. I think what you, Martha, what you can argue is that there are times and places where drone attacks have been effective. There are times and places where they have been absolutely uh, counter-effective uh, and have caused more problems than they have solved. When you kill innocent people, what the end result is that people in the region become anti-American who otherwise would not have been. So I think we have to use drones very, very selectively and effectively. That has not always been the case. Okay, thank you very much, Senator Sanders. Now to the Republicans.